Hey, Bolo Buddies. Thanks for watching. I have 29 super duper big money bolos coming your way. These are items that I sourced low, bought low, and sold high. Um, I consider my big money bolos to be anywhere from $35 and up, and I just break it down to my bread and butter are 35 and less. So that's just how I do it for my videos. Now, I do have an item that sold for $239.99, and I paid $2 for it at a garage sale. So that one's coming. And I have another item that sold for $175, and I paid $1 for it at a garage sale. And there's a story behind that one also. So those are the two, like, big ones that I'm super excited to share with you guys. But um, there's lots of others. There's like a $95 item and two $95. Yeah, there's some good stuff in this video. So definitely stay tuned for the whole video. And I'm going to tell you where I got it, what I paid for it and what it sold for. Um, be sure to check out my other channel sourcing with Bolo Buddies. Um, I'm doing my sourcing videos over there. So if you guys want to see how I source, how I like what I think when I go sourcing, where I get my stuff, all that good stuff, check out Sourcing with Bolo Buddies. There's a link down in the description of the video. I have two Facebook groups. Just type in Bolo Buddies or the links are down below. I also have an Instagram and I think I'm like a couple away from 3000 followers on Instagram. It's kind of funny because Instagram is one of those, I just don't even look at that and I'm like, Oh, I almost have 3000 followers, which is pretty good because um, I don't post a ton over there. So I'm trying to do more. All right, you guys, let's get started with these a big money, big money bolo items. And I'm going to call this these my super duper bolos. All right. The first item I sold is this lot of vintage dollhouse miniatures. Now. Could I have parted this out? Yes. Did I part some of it out? Yes. And you guys will see a lot of those items in my bread and butter videos. Um, but for some reason, I just was getting um, tired of listing dollhouse furniture. I bought so much. Now, I was hoping to get more out of this, but I ended up taking a best offer of $140 and the buyer paid um, the shipping. So still a nice haul. I picked these up at an estate sale um, on the last day. They were with a dollhouse and I asked if I could just buy the furniture and they said yes. So I don't know. I probably should have parted it out. It's funny, um, a little funny story. I sent the picture to my friend that's in my Facebook group that lives locally that I met through Facebook. And I was like, $140. Like I was asking her if I should take it. And she's like, yeah, you should buy it for that. You can flip those items. And I'm like, no, it's my listing. So she was thinking at $140, it was something I could buy and resell and make a profit. And she's probably right. Uh, a lot of these items I could have gotten probably 10 or $15 each for, but it was going to take me a ton of time. And I was just tired. Like I should have sold that little, um, See that little ghost? I think it said like made in China on the bottom. So it wasn't, I don't think it was vintage, but either way, I, I don't know. I probably, I probably goofed. I probably should have just sat it to the side and come back to it, but it probably would have sat in my basement for like a year. So I got off on a tangent with this one. What would you guys have done? Would you have sold the items separately or would you have sold them in a lot like this? And again, I listed a bunch of items, um, separately. So, uh, 140 best offer is what I took. The next item I sold is this angry birds, star Wars lot. I was hoping to get a little more out of this one, but I took a best offer of $45. Uh, this is a little bit harder to find item with the shooters and the set, like this many all together. I probably should have countered at 65, but again, I think it was kind of a slower day and I went ahead and took a best offer of 45 and the buyer paid shipping. This was from a Facebook marketplace pickup and I made my money back very quickly on some other, other items. So this was all profit. 
The next item, oh my goodness. Okay, you guys, this sold for $90. This was a retail arbitrage item. I picked it up at a discount store. I think I paid about $30 for it. It retails for $248. It took years to sell. I sent my husband um, a text and I was like, look what sold. And he's like, wow, you are so patient <laughs> because I waited on the right buyer. But it sold for 90 bucks uh, and the buyer paid shipping. The next item is this Wrangler snapback hat. I picked this up, I believe at a garage sale for a dollar if I remember correctly. And it sold for best offer of $46 and the buyer paid shipping. It was new without tags, really nice uh, condition. The colors were still bright. Um, sometimes when you get new old stock items like this, they can still be faded even if they've never been worn, just depending on how they were um, stored. So this one was definitely taken care of. The next item that sold are these Disney Pixar cars shake and go. So if you shake them or kind of sit them down, they will go rev their engines and drive. Um, I sold these for a best offer of $50 and the buyer paid shipping. I picked these up at garage sales, thrift stores. I think I've gotten some in mystery boxes and then I lotted them up. Okay, guys garage sale, $2, new old stock. I had no idea. I went up to the garage sale and I bought everything that was there that was new old stock. I paid one price for everything and it came to $2 a piece. Um, this sold for $239.99. And it is a rare Moxie Teens Bijou doll. I don't know if I'm saying that right. I've never heard of it. No clue, but this one is apparently worth big bucks and rare because I sold it for $239.99 and the buyer paid shipping. So pretty cool sale. I, the other one is even cooler, like the story behind it, because it's not a new old stock item. But this one sold for more. The next item I sold, I went to a garage sale over the summer and the lady said that she sold on eBay. And I don't know if these were items that she didn't want to list on eBay or if she had them on eBay and they did not sell, but she was selling stuff really cheap and she had really cool stuff. I want to say it was like a dollar for this, or maybe it was even 50 cents. Um, I did take a best offer of $40 and the buyer paid shipping. So basically I bought it from a reseller. The next item I sold came out of a mystery box. It is a Marie Osmond Blossom Bunny porcelain doll. I took a best offer of $35 and the buyer paid shipping. So the face is porcelain. I think that's it. So I just had to carefully wrap the face. Um, I don't know. I was thinking, I think it's the other one. I have another one listed. But um, yeah, so it's numbered and signed. So I don't know if I would call it a bolo. It took a while to sell. Um, it's definitely cute. And but I only got 35 for it. So what do you guys think? The next item is this My Scene Lounge. I picked this up at a garage sale. They had it priced high, in my opinion, for a garage sale. Um they also had some Bratz boys and I ended up allotting it all together. It was the last day of the garage sale. So they did work with me. I don't remember exactly what I ended up paying for it. Maybe 10 or 15 bucks. I did take a best offer of $80 and the buyer paid shipping. Okay. I love this one. Wow. 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 Um, I went into a thrift store and I saw this and I'm like, that's really cool. It's a bottle brush um, tree. I think if I remember correctly, I didn't write it down, but I think it was $2, maybe three. It's a music box. It works. It is very, very cool. It sold pretty quickly. And I took a best offer of $105. So this is a bottle brush tree and it does rotate also and it's made in Japan. You guys know I love made in Japan. I do have a bolo category video on made in Japan items. So if you want to learn more, definitely go check that out. All right. These vintage glass doorknobs have been sitting in my basement for, I have no idea how long, long time. 
Um, they came from a garage sale and a bulk lot of items. I took a best offer of $45 and the buyer paid shipping. The next item is this Monjong, Monjong, I forget. Somebody told me how to say it and I forget. Um, item, I got this at a garage sale. I believe it was a dollar or $2. I can't remember. I didn't write it down. I'm sorry. I should write these things down, but, um, I want to say a dollar. These are not Bakelite. These are just, I believe plastic, uh, like a really hard plastic, but they're still super cool, but they're the jumbo size. They're the larger tiles and they're thicker. Uh, it's a 142 piece set. They are two tone blue and white. And I took a best offer of $40 and the buyer paid shipping. The next item that sold is this Bratz Kids Concert Snap-on Fashion Sasha doll. And she came from the same sale, I believe, as the Moxie. So I got her for two bucks. She sold for $79.99 and the buyer paid shipping. And real quick, if you watch my Sourcing with Bolo Buddies YouTube channel, um, I have a what sold and in the what solds that I'm doing over there, I actually hold the items up and show you, but um, the videos are shorter, less items, but this was one of the items that I showed in one of my videos. So if you want to see what these look like in my hand, definitely go check out that video. The next item is my favorite item. It's got to be my favorite, even over the Moxie doll. I went to a garage sale. Um, this was, gosh, there was just so much stuff. It was just sitting on the table and it has this case. Let me show you. It has a case. So it was covered with this cover. There's a better picture. And I'm like, what is this? And they're like, oh, my mom and dad used it as a letter opener. It's a letter opener. I'm like, that is not a letter opener. <laughs> like that's like a weapon. <laughs> but anyway, I did some research and it's an antique Indo-Persian Mughal, Mughal, I'm probably saying that wrong, Damascus dagger with a rock crystal handle. How cool is this, you guys? I got it for a dollar at a garage sale. They thought it was a letter opener. <laughs> is that cool or what? And I sold it for a best offer of $175 and the buyer paid shipping. The next item are these reindeer. And I picked these up at... That's odd. An estate sale. I thought. That's really weird. I know I wrote it down. Maybe I skipped this one. Oh, nope. Wrong. Okay. $3 at an estate sale. I thought it was five, but it was three. And I sold these for a best offer of $35. Now, the person messaged me and they're like, I've been looking for these everywhere or something along those lines. They were looking for this item. Would I work with them on the price? So I went ahead and took the $35. Usually if people message me and you know they're offering me a fair price, I'll take it. I got a message after it was delivered. You guys, I put each one in a separate box and then put those boxes in a box, if I remember correctly. And they show me a picture and one of them is completely like off of, off. Like the deer is not connected to the thing. I boxed them in separate boxes and then I think I put them in another box. I have no idea how that would happen during shipment. These are like soldered on, like, I don't know. So here's what I think happened, but this is awful and I shouldn't even say it, but I just feel like the way they messaged me saying they were looking for these exact deer, like maybe they broke one of theirs and they were just trying to like get me to give them a partial refund. I know that sounds horrible, but I'm kind of skeptic, skeptical about it. Like, what do you think? Do you think I'm just thinking maybe, I don't know. Anyhow, let's give them the benefit of the doubt and say somehow it broke during shipment, which I just have a hard time believing. These things are solid, solid. Um, but I had the item insured. So I just told them to go to USPS and open a claim and they can get their money back. So if they're lying, I guess they can lie to USPS. Or if they open a return, then I'll just deal with it. But um, I mean, I hope that they wouldn't lie, but I just feel like something's a little sketchy about it. And I could be totally wrong. Just, you know, things don't always add up. And typically when I have that feeling, I somehow get proof that I'm right. And I'm like, eh, 
So I don't know. They haven't, they haven't emailed me back. So, oh, the other weird thing about it, that was like, that took me over the, the hump of thinking this way. I, I looked at when it was delivered and it was like 10 days ago from the time they emailed me. And I'm like, wouldn't you email the seller like immediately if you got an item and it was broke? Why would you wait 10 days? I don't know. Just something's fishy. Okay. I sold a Berkham bunny. And if you guys saw my thrift battle against Donatella Bottolino on Primetime Treasure Hunters channel, I talk about it every time I sell a bunny, but um, he has thrift battles on his channel. And I went up against Donna and this was one of my items. I bought a whole bunch of these Berkham bunnies at a garage sale for a great deal. I had no idea they were a bolo. Even during the show, I wasn't a hundred percent sure, but I knew I had so many of them and I paid so little for them. But I've been selling these things consistently for seventy to a hundred dollars. They are a bolo, um, but they're hard to find. Definitely hard to find. I bought them from um, an estate garage sale, um, and they collected them. And let me see. Do you see the BB? It's right here. It's a, a forward B and a backward B, and they're connected by the line. And that is the symbol that you're looking for. The next item I sold are these plastic canvas sheets. I've talked about these before. Typically, they're bread and butter. However, this lot, there was a whole bunch. I picked these up at a thrift store for $5. You can make like little ornaments. You stitch them like with needle, like cross stitch, needle, I don't know, stuff like that, crafters. Five bucks, I took a best offer of $35 in the buyer paid shipping. Okay, you guys, this is from the Thrift 15 Challenge. I picked this up for $2.99 at the Goodwill. I have a video on that. Um, if you type hashtag Thrift 15 into the YouTube search bar, you can see all 12 people that participated in this challenge. They are all YouTubers. They are resellers. They are Bolo finders. I sold this for $95, you guys, and I got fourth place. That's how good the Bolos were. So definitely go check out those videos. Um, Kayla, the homeschooling picker, took the win. She found this amazing purse. Go check it out. I had no idea it was a Bolo. Check out her video. Um, Profit Monsters came in second. Mountain Man Treasure came in third and I came in fourth. And everybody was a winner in my book because everybody found awesome stuff. But um, the homeschooling picker, everybody is going to be sending her a gift that participated. So if you follow her channel, you can watch the unboxing of what everybody sent her. She's gonna be doing an unboxing. So this is Disney store. It's got the little, um, it just goes like, do, 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 uh, nothing fancy, but $95 and it sold fast. Um, and the buyer paid shipping. The next item is this Coles cares, Dr. Seuss plush. If I ran a zoo or ran the zoo stuffed animal, this is one of the books that got discontinued or banned or whatever, but this is just the plush. So I went ahead and sold it. From what I understand, eBay is pulling books. Um, I don't think a plush would be pulled because there's no words. So um, I don't think it violates anything, but I'm not 100% sure. I didn't get flagged or anything, but I know that some of the books are getting flagged. So just FYI, I sold this for $49.99 and the buyer paid shipping. And I will tell you, this has been sitting on Mercari for about a year with a bunch of other plush. And when the whole Dr. Seuss thing came about, somebody messaged me on Mercari asking me if I would sell them this item. I automatically looked it up. I saw that it was one of the books and um, I went ahead and auctioned it on eBay. I wasn't sure what would happen as far as if it would be a bolo or not. $49.99 is where I started it. I felt like that was fair. Uh, I think some of the books are going for like two, three, four hundred dollars It is crazy. Um, as soon as something is pulled and they're not allowed to sell it or they stop selling it, whether something's banned or if it's just an item that um, is discontinued, the value of the item goes up. 
So uh, $49.99 on this and the buyer paid shipping. I forgot I had it. And again, that person on Mercari by asking me the question alerted me. And I just did a one day auction on eBay. The next item I sold are these MCM uh, reindeer. And I have a story about this. The buyer messaged me and they said that they were upset because I did not um, disclose that one of the eyes had a defect. And I'm like, okay, number one, it is a completely vintage old item. I have all of these pictures and it is kind of, it's this eye right here. And the way I have them sitting, I'm, I'm going to say it's hard to see, but right here, I mean, there's a full on shot of the eyeball, right? And then they message me and tell me that I was covering the eye with the tape measure. Okay. They're right. I am, but I didn't do it on purpose. Like seriously, people. Oh, so frustrating. Um, but this is the same picture of the same deer and the eye is not covered. So I politely pointed out that there is a close up and I even do close up of the face right here, like close up right there. You can see it. I mean, they're not perfect. They are old. They are vintage. Um, but yeah, so they were upset and they were asking me for a refund so that they could have it professionally painted. I'm like, no, send the item back to me. I'm not giving you a partial refund. I took a best offer. I sold them less than what they are worth. In my opinion, um, these are really hard to find rare items. Super cute. Um, I took a best I offer on these for $48 in the buyer paid shipping. So I have not heard back. They just emailed me privately and asked me for a refund. And I said, please open a return and return them. I'm completely fine with accepting a return. I don't think it's a big deal. The paint loss on the eye that that type of stuff happens with, um, older vintage items, you know? So what do you guys think? Um, do you think that I showed the pictures? Okay. Do you think I was trying to hide it with the ruler? I know what you guys are going to say. You're going to say absolutely not because you guys know me and you know that I'm a very honest person and I disclose everything. But um, they seem to think I was being deceptive because of this picture, even though this picture showed it and this picture showed a close up. OK, rant over. <laughs> Moving on to the next item, another Berkham bunny. And this one sold for $100 and the buyer paid shipping. And this one is really cool. It's got the two tone. Um, it's called Berkham bunny blue slag swirl milk glass thumper rabbit figurine figure. Hard to find. That's what HTF is, hard to find. Now, on my new channel, Sourcing with Bolo Buddies, I am doing a series called Today's Bolo. They are 60 second or less videos of a bolo item that I sold. I tell you where I got it, what I paid for it, what it sold for, and it's usually an item to be on the lookout for. It can be bread and butter, it can be big money. Um, so if you, are not following me on sourcing with Bolo Buddies, definitely go over there and check that out. That is something that you can uh, look forward to seeing, just a little quick Bolo. This train sold for a best, or I'm sorry, full asking sale price of $48 plus shipping. And that came out of a mystery box. These GI Joes came out of a bulk toy lot that I bought at a garage sale, sat in my basement forever. I finally listed them. I could not identify them. I, Google Lens is good, but it's not that good when it comes to these guys. And I was like, uh -uh, I'm not doing it. And I knew they were all GI Joe. So I lotted them up. I sold these for $44. The buyer paid shipping. I probably had less than $5 in them. This guy is a Lego Bionicle. He's a big guy. And he sold for $95 and the buyer paid shipping. And it was a bulk lot of um, Bionicles and Transformers. Okay, so I'm gonna show you a clothing item because this has been sitting in my house for probably a year and a half, two years, and I finally listed them and they sold for full asking price of $41.79. The buyer paid shipping. These are seven Melissa McCarthy jeans. Um, I also shared these in my what sold video over on my sourcing with Bolo Buddies where I actually hold the items up and show you. And I showed you like a close up of the inner label of the jeans. So you can check that out also. 
The next item is this Remy Marquise M Star perfume. It is vintage, I do believe. It's um, it, I took a best offer of $35 and the buyer paid shipping. That came from a thrift store, I do believe. It was either a thrift store or a garage sale. I usually pay a buck or two for perfumes. I don't normally comp them out. I just buy them and then take them home. And usually I can get bread and butter out of them. The next item that sold is this vintage Screen Stars tea ringer. It is a t-shirt. It's a men's size large. It is new old stock. It sold for $37.99. The buyer paid shipping. This came for a garage sale and I paid a dollar for it. The next item are these Easter poster die cuts. And I picked these up at a garage sale and they were sitting at the end towards the road, not at the end, but you know, towards the end of the sale. And it said free. And I bought a whole bunch of poster die cuts from like a classroom. And I sold these for $45.59 and the buyer paid shipping. And if you want to know how I shipped these so that they would not get bent and damaged during shipment, I have a shipping hack video over on my sourcing with Bolo Buddies YouTube channel. So definitely go check that out. It's a real easy trick and I use a, um, a free shipping supply. So go check that out. The next item I sold is another Bionicle. This guy has no instructions, no box, but he is complete. I sold him for $76 and the buyer paid shipping. And I believe that one was an international sale. The next item, oh, I already did this one. I thought I did this one. All right, you guys, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. This one was a little bit longer. Um, I don't usually do that many in my big money bolos, but there was some good ones. What was your favorite bolo? You guys know mine was the knife and the moxie teen doll, of course. But um, what was the runner up? The runner up was that bottle brush tree. I don't know. That might That's up there too. A hundred bucks for that. Amazing. All right, you guys. Um, Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Um, please subscribe if you haven't already. Share the video out if you learned something. Um, you can share it over here. There's like to Twitter, Facebook, uh, Pinterest, I don't know, other places. But definitely do that for me. It really helps me. Uh, leave me a comment. And thanks for watching. If you made it this far, say I made it to the end of the video. I know most of you probably don't make it this far. But thanks for